seemingly unrelated regressions is an older technique for estimating simultaneous equations models. This technique belongs to the family of feasible generalized least squares. The idea in generalized least squares is that we estimate uh, estimate the transformed version of the normal OLS regression analysis. So we have a matrix and we use that matrix here omega to multiply the data, the dependent variable and the independent variables and um, then we run OLS regression on those transformed variables. This is more efficient if its assumptions hold than normal OLS regression. Then um, the omega here is calculated based on or it's calculated based on estimated covariance matrix of the error terms. So that's the technicalities and why would one use this technique? First uh, we need to understand the assumptions that this technique makes and uh, the assumptions are that the null beta identification criterion holds. What that means is that there can be no paths between endogenous variables. So when a variable is endogenous variable wise here it cannot be a predictor of any other variable. Another thing to understand about this technique is that when the model is just identified like we have here, then it is equivalent to OLS regression. So because the techniques are equivalent, they produce the exact same result and there is no statistical reason to use one over the other. If the model is over identified, for example, if we take out this path over here, we gain one degree of freedom. And in that case, the seemingly unrelated regression estimation is more efficient. To understand why we gain a bit of efficiency is that in normal regression analysis we're, when we're estimating the effect of x2 on y2 we are basically ignoring any information that we have about x1. It is not included in the model so uh, we are not using it. In seemingly unrelated regressions however we take information from x1 we can understand that um, x1 or x1 could be thought of being an instrumental variable for x2 in a regression of y2 and while x2 is considered exogenous this additional information can be used to make the estimation approach more efficient and uh, but that efficiency comes with a cost so we make an additional assumption that OLS does not make and the assumption is that all the predictors are uncorrelated with all the error terms. So if we estimate this um, model of, of y2 on x2, we don't need to make any assumptions about x1 because that's not included in the OLS model. But in seemingly unrelated regressions, we need to assume that the predictors are uncorrelated with all errors. So x1 is uncorrelated with u2, even if x1 is not used as a predictor of, of y2. So we, we trade, uh, we, we uh, make an assumption, we get a bit of efficiency. This kind of small assumption efficiency trade-offs are very common in statistical estimates. Then uh, this in practice, how this is implemented is that you first run an OLS regression analysis and then uh, you take the residuals from the OLS regression analysis for, of course, you run it for both equations. You take the residuals from both equations, you calculate the residual covariance matrix. You use that an as an estimate for the uh, error covariance matrix and then you plug it in as uh, omega here. In practice, your statistical software will contain a routine that will do this sequence of models for you. So when should this technique be applied and when should OLS estimation be applied instead? There are a couple of reasons for using seemingly unrelated uh, regressions. So it is more efficient, it's more efficient, but the difference may not always be that large. And if you have a large sample size, OLS regression is probably going to be uh, efficient enough anyway. So uh, it's probably not a good trade-off for making a, to make acid additional assumptions and then gain a bit more efficiency if you are efficient enough already. Another reason to use this technique that it allows uh, to do cross equation tests post estimation conveniently. So uh, after seemingly un unrelated regression estimation, we will get the, the variance covariance matrix of both these regression model estimates. So if we want to test post estimation, if this uh, beta one here is the same as that beta one here or, or these regression coefficients, it's convenient to do. If we run two separate OLS regressions, then uh, getting the covariance matrix that contains both estimates requires some extra work. Now reasons to use OLS. It is simpler to apply and that is important because 
in, with simple techniques you are less likely to make mistakes than with complex techniques and you are more likely to understand what you're actually doing which is all, also always valuable. It makes less assumptions so it's more robust and importantly your readers are more familiar with this technique. So if uh, your reader sees all as a regression they will know what is being estimated, what the assumptions are, if they see seemingly unrelated regressions they may not know. So the, it's also a research communication issue. I've reviewed a couple of papers that use a seemingly unrelated regression estimation to estimate saturated models instead of using OLS regression which is equivalent and when I ask the authors to justify their choices I will get back some just statistical jargon that shows that the authors really have not understood what seemingly unrelated regression estimation is or I get back a paper where seemingly unrelated regression is replaced with, with OLS which is uh, what I would recommend in that case. There are a couple of things that you need to understand about these techniques as well. So both of these techniques uh, support cross equation tests while estimating and by cross equation sorry cross equation constraints so we can for example constrain the regression paths of x1 on y1 and x2 on y2 to be equal at beta 1 and then allow this third path to be estimated freely. So we can do both uh, these constraints, how the constraints are applied. It gets a bit technical but it can be done using both estimation approaches. Of course then with OLS we would not be estimating one equation at a time anymore but we would be estimating something called system OLS. Another thing to understand is that these are not the only techniques that you can apply for estimating this kind of models. So if you have this kind of simultaneous equations model you can also apply maximum likelihood estimation or you can apply generalized method of moment estimation which is uh, perhaps a more modern alternative of seemingly unrelated regression estimation and uh, in, in my opinion it obsoletes this technique. 